Hello and welcome to another standard gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a blue, red and green or teamer colored landfall ramp deck as suggested by my supporters on Patreon and I'm sure you've already seen some of this deck in action as it's been taking a standard by storm. A lot of ways you can configure this deck as well so this is my current iteration. Now what's the general idea behind this deck? We want to build up our mana using these new Capenna fetch lanes, getting the corresponding basic and gaining a life which is also quite helpful against the various aggro decks in the format. We have 14 total of these fetch lanes and that number is important as we'll get to in a second. And then we want to combine them with effects that return lands out of our graveyard. We've got four copies of Aftermath Analyst which enters milling three cards. Then we can sacrifice it to return all lands from the graveyard to the battlefield tapped. And then at four mana we also have a copy of Splendid Reclamation which has that same effect as Analyst stapled onto a sorcery instead. And then we also have four copies of World Souls Rage which which can be used early on to return some lands from the graveyard, can even put lands in play from our hand as well. And then in the late game this will actually be our finisher to burn the opponent out once we generate enough mana, especially when combined with a Virtue of Strength, which also takes full advantage of the fact that we have all basics in our mana base, as it can now triple the mana generated by those lands. And then early on we can also use it to get back a fetch land out of our graveyard, or maybe return a key creature as well, so it is quite flexible. So that's our game plan. Then to support that game plan we also have four copies of Nissa, which is very important here, generating additional mana whenever a land enters a battlefield. So with a fetch land Nissa can immediately generate two mana and then also finds another L4 elemental, so can find other copies of itself in case it gets removed, but can also find Aftermath Analyst as an elf. And we also have a one-off elemental here with Titania, which also has great synergy throughout the deck as we can gain a lot of extra life whenever lands end up in our graveyard, whether we sacrifice sacrifice them from the battlefield or mill them with her various mill effects, Titania will trigger, so that can keep us alive against aggro. And then I also have a one-off Argoth in the mana base, which can help us meld with Titania to also potentially give us an alternate win condition, so that's been pretty fun. And then other ways we can fill the graveyard include the Archaeologist, which can mill a few cards, maybe find some of those key non-creature spells, but either way we'll end up filling the graveyard with additional lanes, which we can later get back. And then a Shigeki can also be played early and activated to help us ramp and put more cards in the graveyard. And in the late game, once we have a lot of mana, we can also channel it to get back multiple cards out of the graveyard, as long as they're not legendary. So that can also get back a World Souls Rage that we used early, or maybe milled, to eventually help close out the game. And it also helps us set up one of our infinite combos that the deck is capable of, which I'll get to in a second. And then at 2 mana we can also adventure Kellen to investigate and play an additional land, so we can maybe cast our 4 drops on turn 3 already, including the creature half as a 3-4 flying vigilance, so that can also get in the way and maybe destroy our own clue token to draw card. Then at 3 mana we've got Anissa and Titania, and then at 4, Ill-Timed Explosion as our sweeper of choice. It's not even a dead card against control, since we can always just draw 2 cards with it, but against aggro we'll often want to discard something to wipe the board. We even have some 7 drops we can discard if we need to deal a lot of damage. And then once we have a lot of mana, after ramping with our various effects like Splendid Reclamation, Analyst and World Souls Rage, we can easily cast and flash back Memory Deluge, so even if we happen to mill it we can still get value out of the graveyard, and that will help find the missing combo pieces to set up Virtue of Strength plus our World Souls Rage. And then a three copies of Virtue could potentially play a fourth copy as well, since the adventure is still useful at getting back creatures out of the graveyard. Can even get back a Shigeki if we happen to mill it, which can then in turn get back some non-creature spells as well. And then I also wanted to make room for one Colossal Sky Turtle, as it can help assemble that infinite combo, and we can also use it early by channeling it for one and a blue to return a creature back to its owner's hand at instant speed. Can maybe answer a creature that we cannot destroy using our ill-timed explosion. And then we're mostly interested in the green channel ability, where we get to return any card from our graveyard to our hand. So let's say we're in the late game, we've milled all 14 of our fetch lands, and we have a Nissa on the battlefield. So now getting back a fetch land doesn't find a basic, but still generates a mana using Nissa's ability. So let's say we cast Splendid Reclamation, we now get 14 of those fetch lands back, generate 14 mana with Nissa. We can spend 6 of that mana channeling Shigeki for x equals 2, getting back our Splendid Reclamation as well as Colossal Sky Turtle. 
Now we've got eight mana left, spent three to channel Sky Turtle, getting back Shigeki so we can set up that loop once again, and then with the remaining five mana, cast Splendid Reclamation, so we've got one mana left and we can set up that loop once again to keep going over and over, generate infinite mana, at some point use Sky Turtle or Shigeki to get back World Soul's Rage and burn the opponent out. Not very likely to happen, takes way too many clicks to be realistic to do on Arena, but I still wanted to mention it as kind of a fun infinite combo. And then the mana base is very simple and also very budget friendly with 14 fetch lands, lots of basics and our one-off Argoth in case you want to run Titania as well. Now I've seen some of these lists that play more than 60 cards so you can fit in more basic lands to keep fetching with your fetch lands, which is certainly a valid approach, but I'm keeping things to 60 cards. And then other cards you can consider for either the main deck or sideboard, and cards I've tried, Slogurk, I'm sure people will mention in the comments, can be very synergistic with all these fetch lands, although it's much better if you actually have some channel lands like Boseju and Otawara to get back, so I haven't found it to be super effective in this current build. And then a Titan of Industries, also a card I've experimented with in the main deck, but certainly something I would want in the 75 as an elemental we can find with Nyssa, and it can also maybe deal with problematic artifacts or enchantments, especially after a sideboard if the opponent tries to bring in some graveyard hate. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand's a little slow to get started, admittedly. Can we still keep? Hideout gets green. And then turn three, we could play Nissa, hope it survives, and then turn four, kind of pull ahead. Yeah, I'll try it. The fact that we at least gain a bit of life helps out against aggro. So definitely get my green sorted, so next turn we could also use the adventure. Could also keep Virtue in hand to discard to an ill-timed explosion, which can also be relevant. Now we could go for Archaeologist, but I do want to make sure I play Nissan 3, even though there's a small chance it gets removed. So yeah, now the question is, do I hang on to this Virtue of Strength to discard to Explosion? Against Mono Green, we might need to deal 4 plus damage, so I think I hang on to it now. And then we could see a fight spell take care of Nissa if we play it next turn. Now Analyst is also an option. Yeah, I'll play Nissa. If they remove it, that's fine. We'll still have other options available. And it does seem like they have an instant for one mana. Could be maybe a Tyvar's stand. For now Polucronos. Five Toughness. So if we try to wipe the board and they have a Tyvar stand, they can keep Polucronos alive. So what's the alternative? Play a fetch land, make two mana, get an elf or an elemental, and then we could just play analysts, which can maybe chump Polychronos and sacrifice in two turns. Yeah, maybe wait for them to tap out. And Titania could gain us some life back as well. So yeah, why not play Titania first and then Analyst, and then we can potentially gain more life of Titania as well. And then we may not even have to cast a Sweeper if we gain enough life. So we're back to 17. And Titania could transform if we find Argoth. Opponent now with a Planeswalker, Renard Realmbreaker. Be swift. We haven't much time. So they still have a green available. Well, this attack sort of implies a pump spell. They can only cast Tyvor Stand for X equals 1, which I guess would be enough to take out Titania if we block the forest. But it would kind of flush it out, and then next turn we can potentially reset the board. Although at this point we might just go with Analyst, make a bunch of mana, cast Virtue, and then Rage can be lethal. But uh, yeah, I don't want to just take it all. So yeah, I guess we block the forest here, which...
probably forces him to tap out the most. Take 10. Yeah, and there's a stand. Okay, so we're at 7. Find another explosion. So, let's say we sack Analyst. How many fetch lines do we have here? Quite a lot. So that's plus 5 mana and uh, 5 life. Play another land, so 5, 6, 7 mana total. And then we could play Virtue of Strength. Yeah, that's got to be worth it. And then Nissa could find another Analyst, could also find another Nissa. But uh, yeah, found the Analyst, so now we can still play it and activate to make even more mana. So Nissa doing what she's designed to do in this deck, make a lot of mana. Okay, and then just replay Analyst and sacrifice it here. Milling some more lands. So despite having the sweeper and being able to wipe their board, we might take a slightly different approach here. So we only have forests left in the deck now. And now we're out of basics, so... We've got all the lines in play we'll ever need. And then we haven't played land for turn yet. So, yeah, can play Virtue of Strength. Play Forest. And then currently we could Rage for X equals 10, which is enough to take out one creature. Could also maybe draw with the Explosion and see where we're at. Either way, next turn Rage can be lethal. So, I could deal 4 to each creature, leaving them with just Pelucranos, no way we die next turn, and then with Rage we'll get there. And in fact, we could also cast another Rage right now to just finish off Pelucranos. And, uh, 2 is enough. And we only have fetch lands in the graveyard, so I guess we'll just gain two. Could have done it for more just to gain a bit more life, but this is also slowing down the game unnecessarily. And I guess we'll play Archaeologist. Okay, so if they have a Boseju in hand, they can maybe blow up our Virtue, which would be bad. Otherwise, next turn we'll have a ton of mana to sink into this Rage. Yeah, that's the power of Nyssa with... Aftermath Analyst, opponent with the Bloomkin, 4-4, four, four. one card left in hand, and they're looking at their clue token here. Opponent animates a forest, can take it. So it doesn't look like they have Boseju in hand. Get to untap, double tap Q to float all our mana, and that makes it a little easier, but at 20, let's do this for 25. And that should be more than enough. Alright, GG's. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Missing some of our key cards, but now Analyst was a great draw. So, we don't have to play it on turn 2, could start with Archaeologist. Uh, so let me fetch a blue source. Uh, 
and I don't want to expose our uh, visionary to removal if I can help it. Opponent on Boros tokens here. Okay, could still play Analyst now since Boros isn't known for having a ton of removal. Maybe the case that deals damage equal to the number of creatures they control. So that's maybe still a reason to go for Archaeologist. And then the plan is Analyst next turn, and then turn after, sacrifice it. So I do want to make sure I have green mana in play. So next turn we can play Analyst and a fetch land. Okay, and now we've got a 1-4 blocker that can get in the way a little bit better. And then with all that mana we can potentially use Visionary to get stuff back. War Leader's Call to pump the team. And an ill-timed explosion is also quite good in the matchup. Okay, so we'll play Analysts, and then... What do we want to fetch here? Maybe another blue source, but our fetch lines don't get blue. So in that case, just another forest is fine. Pass it back. And then... There's already some goodies in the graveyard and plenty of lands. So if we get to untap and sack Analyst, we're in business. Let's see if they have the case. They don't. Maybe a Convoke Knight Errant. Alright. So we probably want to wait to sack Analyst until the opponent's turn so we can jump with it first. And then what we don't have is a very expensive card in hand to set up the ill-timed explosion. So finding one of our seven drops could help there. Opponent keeps adding to the board. And the recruiter's gonna hurt. So archaeologist also happy to jump if needed. Opponent's gonna grow the warden. So yeah, how many lands do we get back exactly? Three, four, five, six. So next turn I'll have at least ten mana. Which... Is there anything else in the graveyard we can get back with Visionary? Just a Deluge we can uh, flash back. Now I can also play another Analyst and sack it once again, which also gains me some life. So maybe it's not worth it to chump Recruiter just yet, on the off chance that we don't wipe the board next turn. I'll just block a three power creature instead. But yeah, the life gain from these fetch lands also helps out. So this one can get forest since we have triple theater which can get mountain and island. So we fall to five and found Nissa. Okay, so let's say we now play Nissa, play a fetch land that's plus two mana. Then I can play another analyst, sacrifice it. And problem is we're kind of running low on mountains and islands in the deck. But that's still going to generate a nice bit of mana for us. Could also rage, but uh, it's not quite lethal yet. So a few ways we can approach this, but uh, I'm not opposed to playing Nissa here. And then we'll see what we hit off Nissa's ability. Titania, that can also gain us some life back. So let's see, play Titania, Analyst, and then sacrifice it. Okay, so that should gain us enough life where we can take another hit. And I'll just do it now on the off chance that there's some way the opponent can mess with our plan. And so we can make some more mana that we can potentially use here. Now of course we could also flashback Deluge during the opponent's turn with all this floating mana. 
So it wouldn't have gone to waste necessarily. So our deck is going off. And we're about to get all the basics out of our deck. Probably don't need as much red mana. Okay. So, got uh, 10 mana floating, anything spicy in the graveyard, just a couple deluges. We're back to 26, so I feel pretty safe, but uh, yeah, we could flashback deluge and then uh, take it from there, or we could cast Rage with 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 fetch lands in the graveyard. That gains us even more life. Sure. So, X equals 6. Take out the Knight Errants. Trigger Nissa again a whole bunch. As well as gain more life with Titania. And then we can still flashback Deluge to set up for next turn, basically. So these still gain us a bunch of life, but they don't get any more lanes. Yeah, when you're going off, the turns can take a while since there's a lot of triggers to go through. I recommend using the space bar in combination with your mouse. Makes things a little easier. Alright, so now we can flash back Deluge. And what do we hit? Another Rage and a Virtue Strength. Okay, that'll do. We're at 44, so not in any danger of dying. All thanks to Titania. And then next turn we can do some math here. If I cast Virtue of Strength, we still have 8 lands untapped. So that's 8 times 3. So that should be enough to set up a lethal rage. Opponent's gonna grow their ward on a bunch. So yeah, it's not like the Boros deck had a bad draw. Could have been even better with some goblin tokens, I assume. But uh, yeah, a very functional draw. And Titania holding back all their smaller creatures as well. And grow Warden once more. And then... Yeah, let's not waste any time, just... Uh, Make sure to leave some red and green mana untapped. Okay, that's Virtue of Strength. And then 20 damage should do. Okay. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Probably start by fetching a blue source. Drawing the forest also helps with that. So we can play turn 2 Archaeologist. Maybe turn 3 Nyssa. And then Reclamation, hopefully with multiple lands in the graveyard. Opponent's blue-black. Counter spells early on could be effective. Removal... We don't care about as much. Of course, prefer getting some value of Nissa before they take it out. Resolves. And we milled an Analyst and a couple more lands. So the Reclamation is looking good. Opponent flashing in Mastermind. Could cast Rage for X equals 1, potentially. Take out the Mastermind. So we don't expose Nissa to removal. Yeah, that seems fine. Get back a land from Graveyard is better value. And then I want to get maybe a second blue source for Memory Deluge. So 
So the flexibility of Rage being kind of an early ramp spell slash removal spell and then late game a finisher is quite nice. Now they need to remove my Archaeologist if Gix wants to draw a card, which we're fine with. And then if they're tapped out, maybe play fetch land, reclamation back a bunch more lands. Or we can see if uh, there's a window for Nyssa to trigger. Opponent passes with all their mana, so this is where Memory Deluge looks good. So we don't run into any counter spells. So play Courtyard and pass it back, basically. Get another Forest. Another Mastermind, okay. So they could still have a Make Disappear in hand, so I'll wait on the Deluge. Yeah, I think we'll take the hits. They could of course draw into a counter spell, but I kind of want them to tap out if possible. So we can get our mana engines online. Opponent's gonna keep up all four mana once again, so we'll see if they have a response to this deluge. Wanna just keep hitting our land drops. Ertai gonna counter and draw. At least Mastermind doesn't trigger in the opponent's turn. Find a replacement deluge. But uh, let's see here. We've got three fetch lands and Argoth and Graveyard. So Splendid Reclamation looks appealing. I uh, could also Virtue of Strength first. Get a fetch line back, play it. And then Reclamation. I guess that's acceptable. Can't quite play Nyssa first and still go off. So let's do that. Get back. I guess we could also go for Analyst, actually. Um, but I wouldn't be able to play and activate it here. But maybe getting Analyst and then Reclamation is still the play. So I don't play a land for the turn, but next turn could be better. Especially if we combine Analyst with Nyssa. Okay, so we've got a bunch more mana now. A 1-4 still blocks surprisingly well. Better opponent is still uh, drawing a few extra cards here. So if their hand has a lot of counter spells, they could still overpower us. Deep Cavern Band's also pretty good. Haven't drawn any of our sweepers yet. So if we find those, we can still maybe reset the board. So if I were them, maybe take the Analyst. Opponent takes Deluge. Still have one in Graveyard we can flash back. But they did have a second bat. Which now I imagine goes for Analyst. Now Kellen's also just a good flying blocker to hold off their attackers. So that could be annoying unless they have some spot removal. Opponent goes for Archaeologist next. Is there a third bat? There isn't. Okay, I mean, play Analyst for starters. And then I can play Nyssa. And then let's see. Yeah, we would have enough mana to sack Analyst in response to removal on Nyssa. So that seems like the course of action. I suppose they could remove Analyst in response to me playing Nyssa, but then we'll still just sacrifice the Analyst, which is fine. And we have a land in hand to enable Nyssa to begin with. Okay, and this can make blue. So if I sack Analyst now, what happens? Our opponent removes Nyssa in response, most likely. So I don't get to make a bunch of mana. We have three, four fetch lands. So it is tempting to activate Analyst now. They remove Nyssa. I can still adventure Kellen at the very least. And then we'll have a ton of mana for next turn. Or I can pass it back. But then I wouldn't really be able to use a floating mana since we don't have enough to flashback Deluge. Since we only have four fetch lands. So, interesting spot. I think I should still go for it now. Although go for the throat seems super likely. 
Oh, we'll find out. No go for the throat, so Nissa gets to trigger. Awesome. So maybe they just have a make disappear in hand as their interaction. Find another analyst. So we're building up our mana reserves. They're gonna bounce Nissa with Odawara. Yeah, a little late, but uh, I don't mind. So get a few more lanes. They did deny a little bit of mana here. Alright, so we've got four mana floating to untap lanes, so I could still play another analyst and sacrifice it. Versus I guess we can't quite flashback Deluge. Could adventure Kellen and play it, which I also don't hate. And then save Nissa plus Analyst for next turn, assuming no more bats. Okay, we're at 21, we've got a lot of mana now. A good hand and a Deluge in Graveyard. And then Virtue of Strength could also come into play next turn. I want to make sure to tap Argoth to cast a Virtue. Three cards in hand for the opponents. Don't think they have a go for the throat, or we would have seen it last turn. Deepest Betrayal, we also don't really mind. Pretty slow threat. And the opponent can't even attack. So it's definitely going to be an exciting turn for us. Probably want to start with Virtue of Strength. And take it from there. Play Analysts, play Nissa. Still flashback Deluge pretty easily. And then it's just a matter of finding Rage to close out the game. Ill timed explosion would also be pretty good here. Last basic out of the deck. Okay, so next up, cast Deluge, making sure to leave up all our colors that we need. And there's the ill-timed explosion and World Souls Rage. So we could explosion just to kind of wipe the board here. Although I guess if I discard Nissa, I only deal 3 to everything, leaving the Deepest Betrayal alive. But we would also kill the bats, so we get a bunch more cards in hand. That seems fine. Since we can't quite rage for lethal here, I'm pretty sure. Can double check. Yeah, only 14 mana, so it would be x equals 12. Which doesn't quite do it. Can maybe cast Titania too here. Opponent does get a bat, but it's gonna just die to the explosion. Okay, so next can play Titania, cast Deluge. Finding Deluge and a land. And sure, we'll play Archaeologist as well. 13 cards remaining. Get another Rage in hand. And we can even attack if we'd like. Opponent takes it. And then next turn we'll have plenty of mana for lethal World Souls Rage. I 
Titania triggers once again. Could double block. But opponent knows about the rage in hand. And we can easily play around and make disappear. We even get to transform Titania here with Argoth, which would have been fun to see. A nice large Titania getting back all the fetch lands. But uh, yeah, this is good enough. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a uh, keepable hand. Missing red mana at the moment. And Hideout probably wants to fetch an island, so we have double blue for Deluge. Turn two, maybe just play the Visionary. Which can also help us ramp. Opponent red white. So, likely another Boros Convoke deck. So it's relatively safe to just play Nissa next turn. Do we see some goblin tokens? We do. So opponent has a good start. Do they also have a Knight Iron to Convoke? They do not. And we found an ill-timed explosion, so that will come in handy. Alright, so I can um, potentially use Virtuous Strength, get back hideouts, and then play an untapped land to still activate Shigeki. Or we could play Nissa, and then um, next turn we can ill-timed explosion. Although I don't really want to lose my own Nissa, and currently don't have any cheap cards in hand to discard. So, kind of liking the virtue line here. And then we can also soak up an attack. Especially if they play some Anthem Effect. Alright, case of the Gateway Express. So they have the removal spell, which they will get to solve right away. And we're just hoping for a red source, which we found easily. So Courtyard, get Mountain. And then next turn we can Explosion. And I guess we'll have Shigeki in hand to discard at the very least. So case is solved, but our opponent's board is going to disintegrate. And another explosion is good insurance. So let's uh, maybe start by fetching. Okay, what do we want to discard? How's my next turn going to look like? Probably want to play Nissa. Can play a land. Don't have a fetch land, sadly, to go with it. But um, can generate an extra mana for us. Could set up Rage to get back a bunch of fetch lands. That's also quite appealing. So with that extra mana, I guess we'll be able to flash back Deluge pretty easily. So may not need that right away. And maybe I just get rid of a land, which we can get back with the Rage, although the more mana the better. Close call. Maybe I don't need Shigeki right away. Can always get it back later with another Virtue of Strength. And I do want to make sure I keep the second Explosion. Opponent's got another Demolition, which they might have been able to cast last turn, but our opponent played around a Sweeper here. Okay, so let's say we... Do you want to cast World Soul's Rage? We have five lands in Graveyard, so can cast one X equals four. Or we could set up our board a bit more first with Nissa and Titania, which, yeah, seems fine. Our opponent's not applying too much pressure here. And then Titania can also gain us a bunch more life. And alright, her opponent has seen enough. Can even cast her Virtue of Strength first to generate even more mana and then completely take over. So yeah, that's another Boros Convoke deck it dealt with. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. And we've got a bit of a slow one here. Nissan 3, although we'll need to find more fetch lines to go with it. Can always rage to ramp just by getting back a fetch land. But yeah, no blue mana to go with the explosion right away, so we'll need to find one or have Nissa survive. So, 
this hand could have some issues, but it's not bad enough to mulligan. Facing red-black. More aggressive deck, it seems. Maybe goblins, who knows. So we can get islands. Probably get another mountain then. And a bat can have a look, likely taking the explosion, although it's uncastable at the moment. Then Rage would take out the bat to get the explosion back, so maybe they just start by taking the Rage. This becomes more problematic if they have a second discard spell to follow up the bat. Alright, perfect. Found our blue mana. And then if Nyssa survives, great. If not, we can still fall back on the explosion. Could see something like a Preacher at uh, 4 Toughness, which can survive a discarded Nyssa. But of course, explosion could maybe draw into something more expensive. It's going to be an Inti instead. It's not going to grow the bats large enough to survive the explosion. So yeah, it's not looking great for the Rakdos deck, unless they can conjure up another bat to take the explosion next turn. And sure, we'll play Nissa. So that if they do have another bat, we can at least play Hideout and get something going. Bitter Triumph takes out Nissa. And Archfiend of the Dross, so they're probably combining that with the uh, Stormseeker to give it haste. But uh, yeah, it's gonna go to waste here, points empty handed. And there we see Preacher, which is also gonna go to waste. So our opponent was all in on this early aggression, but it's not gonna work out for them. Explosion now probably discarding Sky Turtle to keep Nyssa. And then I might want to keep the hideout to go with Nyssa. And that's enough for a concession. Wipe the opponent's board and they don't have any resources to work with. Alright, so we got to see this Teamer Landfall Ramp deck in action and I'm very impressed by what it's capable of. Seems like a pretty difficult deck to interact with since even if you take out the creatures we're still putting additional lands in play. If we play and sacrifice Analyst it's not like taking it out is really gonna help. So the key creatures to take out are Nyssa but even there we can potentially generate immediate value especially if we already have an Analyst in play ready to sacrifice. So removal is not the answer. Counter spells are only good in the early game since most of them are conditional in nature so once the ramp deck builds up enough mana it can still take over and pay for those conditional counter spells and then uh, the fact that we can even cast cards like memory deluge at instant speed makes it a lot more difficult for control decks to kind of fight it so that maybe leaves answers like the poison deck which can ignore the life gain since your traditional aggro decks may not work out against all the life gain that the deck can generate and then maybe a deck like green white enchantments could also have a favorite favorable matchup since it can be pretty fast and build up a creature large enough to survive an ill-timed explosion on turn 4 and then especially if they can give a creature trample with audacity they can trample over an analyst which could otherwise soak up a large attack and then you've got your spell-based combo decks that use the graveyard to maybe combo off with reenact the crime that can potentially win in one big turn. Those could also have a favorable matchup since we don't really have any counter spells to interact on the stack. But of course, if you take this to best of three, things get a bit more complicated as you can add maybe some counter spells out of the sideboard. But you can also expect to face more graveyard hate to try to slow down all those fetch lands coming back from the graveyard over and over. So things get a bit more interesting after sideboard. But uh, yeah, for now, this seems like a pretty powerful deck in the best of one meta. So I expect to see more of it going forward, since it's not even all that expensive to put together, since the mana base is all commons. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.